Hey guys, just a reminder that the annual elk hunting seminar hosted by Christian Hunters of America is coming up this July 16th. Doors open at 5 p.m. The seminar is at 6 at the Calvary Church just off of I-17 between Thunderbird and Cactus. Bowhunting AZ will be there recording podcasts and we'll have our booth there as well with merch. Come say hi and let's all elevate our knowledge about elk. Can't wait to see you all there. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Bowhunting AZ Podcast. Today I'm interviewing Jason Miller. Jason is a true trail cam guru. When it comes to footage and photos of wildlife captured, I've yet to see an individual who tops his consistent postings across social media. Not only does he consistently share his content, but the uniqueness and authenticity of wildlife behavior that he captures is literally unparalleled. To be frank, the only other people that I see posting this quality of content are household names like Jay Scott, Randy Eichler, and other large ranch owners in our neighboring state of Colorado. When it comes to the art of trail cams, this guy has it down. Let's jump on into the episode. Backwoods Grind. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a huge coffee nut. I like my coffee strong and a solid flavor to back it up. The guys over at Backwoods Grind have it going on. I get my coffee shipped every two weeks to me automatically, and you can choose whole bean or different variations of ground. You can opt for a one-time purchase, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. Backwoods Grind is a coffee that goes beyond the mug. From traditions to memories and long-lasting relationships, these are all built upon the passion brought to you by their blends, specifically roasted for hunters and outdoorsmen alike. Be sure to check out their three newly released blends, Camp House, Fireside, and Nightcap. Visit BackwoodsGrind.com and use code BAZ10 to get 10% off your order. I'd also like to thank Rax. Rax is hands down the coolest bow hangers on the market. Display your bow with pride in your house, your garage, or anywhere you'd like. They carry most major bow brands while also offering a custom service if you have an idea or logo of your own that you'd like to make into a bow hanger. Use them to display your traditional bow, compound bow, or crossbow. They also work great for hanging your hunting gear, bags, or hats. Not to mention, the designs look just plain awesome all by themselves. A Rax hanger makes for a great gift for that special hunter in your life. Go to RaxInc.com. That's R-A-X-X-I-N-C.com to see some of the available designs or contact Rax to discuss a custom hanger of your own. If you'd like to see how sick their custom hangers are, go check out my Instagram feed. For listeners of the Bohani Nazi podcast, use the promo code PODCAST and get 15% off your order. Racks, show off your passion. Open Country Optics. Open Country Optics is your number one online source for optics and optics rentals. With quality Swarovski glass before your eyes, Open Country Optics brings the game closer. Rentals include a tripod, binos, and you can even add on a phone scope or foldable chair to glass from. All of the optics arrive in a durable Pelican case with insulated foam. You won't find any other company who provides you an all-inclusive package like Open Country Optics. Visit them today at opencountryoptics.com. Use promo code BHAZ and get 5% off rentals or $50 off any optics purchase. Open Country Optics, bringing the game closer. Scent Assassin. Scent Assassin, the new leader in scent elimination. Scent Assassin manufactures the latest technology in scent elimination spray body wash, and laundry detergent. Forget the wind, hunt anywhere, anytime. Check out their full product line at sendassassin.com. Use promo code BOHUNTINGAZ for 20% off your order. Hey everyone, thanks for joining another episode of the Bowhunting AZ podcast. Today with me I have Jason Miller. Uh, Jason is a trail cam guru and uh, 
He has some of the most awesome authentic content that I've ever seen. A lot of things that people just don't typically capture in wildlife and game. And uh, so we're just gonna kind of pick Jason's brain today. He's uh, been gracious to come on here with and talk with us and just kind of lend us his knowledge and everything. Um, thanks so much, Jason, for joining me today. Uh, how long have you lived here in Arizona and how long have you been hunting for? Oh, thank you. Um, I've lived here for about 39 years and I've uh, been hunting since I was probably about 12 years old. <laughs> awesome. And do you remember who took you on that first hunt? And what was that first hunt, if you can recall? Uh, the first time I actually went on or the first time I actually going out hunting. Uh, I used to tag along with my brother on many of his hunts before I was old enough to actually hunt myself. So okay. probably around 12, 13-ish, you know, around... Yeah. I've been in the desert ever since. <laughs> yep. Um... Before we dive into trail camps today, kind of tell us a little bit about that personal hunting journey, how it's evolved, and then uh, do you have a favorite species that you like to pursue? Well, you know, <laughs> what I used to do is I'd go out with my 22 hunting bunnies while my brother would be out hunting deer or <laughs> And uh, so I'd tag along and kind of go do my thing, but the f out in the wild was hobelina. So ever since then, it's been my favorite ammo. Yeah. Do you prefer then archery or rifle for that? Um, oh, I love bow. I love bow okay. and arrow. I, I started off, off actually with a bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's something about rifle hunting. I enjoy that too, but out of the two, I prefer bow and arrow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have any hunts planned for this year? Uh, I'm going to go for bear uh, at the end of August. And then my daughter, if she gets drawn for rifle uh, deer, in the fall, I'll go on that. And then uh, again in December for archery javelina. So that's what I've got lined up so far. Awesome. Uh, to date, what's been your most memorable hunt? Oh, <laughs> you know, many years ago, I shot my, my second bear in the Chiricahuas, and uh, it came after me. And it ended up being a, a, a record book SEI skull sized bear, a monster. Wow. And I unloaded everything I had in my gun in it to kill it. And um, that was probably most memorable uh, for me. Um, everyone matters. You know, I take something from it. Um, can you recall exactly when you began to use trail cams? Uh, seriously, about three years ago. Okay. Uh, up till then, I'd have the odd one here and there and kind of didn't know what I was doing. Um, and then I started getting some good picks and I got deep into it and I've been deep into it ever since. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> it shows, I look forward every time I see there's a post by you, I, I get so excited to see whatever it is and stuff. So some of the, the con oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, the next closest thing to like reminiscing as a kid on Christmas morning is pulling a card from a trail cam, getting ready to see what you got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it kind of keeps me in the field year round. You know, it's almost like having a a, a tag to go fill every time I go check my camera because I'm going to have something on there that's like, you know, so exciting. It's amazing. It's so cool. And it gets you out there, you know? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, how many trail cameras do you currently own? Uh, right now, 24. 24 nice and how many do you run all 24 at once or do you kind of cycle them how does that work uh yeah i cycle them um it depends on the time of year like for instance right now april from april to september the bears are down in in, in my spot so mm -hmm. i got the majority of my cameras on all different trails down there just so i can get all my bear pics and videos because i know from you know october to march I'm not going to be able to get any more bears because they're going to be too high. And yeah. uh, so now it's right now bears. Um, I've got a few in the low desert for javelina, you know, and some washes. Um, deer are starting to, you know, get their their antlers, their antler growth starting. So uh, the velvet. Um, I got a couple in the desert for that. Um, I don't usually have them all out. Uh, there's usually five or six I have at home case i run into something when i go to check cams you know i have backup to set up yeah absolutely um 
What are some recommendations on specific camera brands? Since you have 24 of them, what companies have you found that pretty much works the best and which are some that you recommend avoiding altogether? Um, my best one, you know what? All of them are good. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got, I don't spend on cameras. You know, I've got, a, I've got three that are over 50 bucks. Uh, the rest are below 50 bucks. And the ones that are really cheap, honestly, they give me awesome pictures. Uh, there, there's so many things I've learned in the last three years that go into the cameras. It's not what the camera can do for you. It's, it's how you set it up. You know, there's a lot of different things. The sun, shading, wind, grass, branches. Uh, there's so many things that dictate what kind of picture you're going to get, regardless of how good the camera is. Yeah. Um, some of my best picks have been off my cheapest cameras, believe it or not. But, uh, you know, I, I really like Bushnell. One of my all-time favorites is Wild Game right now. Because Wild Game give me clear picks, great videos. Um and the lighting and situation in the desert or shaded tree areas, wild game tends to do well no matter where I put it. You know, it's hit and miss. I, I've got to try them in different areas for different picks depending on how much sunlight, you know. Uh, so right now I would say, you know, like I said, Bushnell um, and, and wild game are, are top of the line. Uh, I've got Tasco. Primos, uh, Stealth Camps, they're all good, mm -hmm. but some I kind of favor a little bit more in certain areas because of, you know, the, the country. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, do you care much at all about megapixels? Is there, will you go, you know, will you not go below a certain megapixel or do you try and stay at a certain area? Um, reason I ask is because at, at first I didn't personally care. And then as I've, as I've kind of progressed, uh, during velvet and some of these early stages and stuff, I like the ability to pinch and pull and kind of look at, you know, trying to zoom in and stuff. Uh, does that matter at all to you or what's your take on that? Um, well, I've always thought the more megapixel, the better. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've always, you know, heard that now I hear it's not so much the case, but I only go by what I see on my cameras. I've got a cheap breather camera that, is five megapixel, uh -huh. and it takes the crispy, the cri most crisp pics I've ever seen. Yet my my Bushnell is a twenty megapixel, and it also takes great pics. <laughs> but it, when it comes to zooming in and, and, and messing with the picture a little bit, you do see an effect. Personally, I'm not I'm not bothered. You know, it, it can be high MP or low, uh, you know low MP. Um, my cam, my cameras are set up usually five, six feet from where I'm hoping to get the picture of the animal. And all my cameras, no matter the megapixel, do well. So it really, it, it all depends on your setup and what you're looking to get, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I, I've always thought the more the better. But it's, it's not so much the case with what I've seen. Absolutely, absolutely. Um how do you go about running trail cams throughout the year, uh, specifically here in Arizona, obviously? Do you place them for a specific season only? Do you pull that camera out of that spot at a certain time of the year, maybe if it gets too hot or something else, or is it just a year-round thing for you? Um, right now, uh, the bears are low, uh, so I've got them in the bear areas. Um, during the rut, I'll place them in areas on trails and, and, and scrape lines for deer. So I'll put more cameras in that area, you know, uh, December, January. Mm -hmm. um, during the off season, which is the spring and the fall, you know, in between hunts, um, I'm just after cool pictures. So then I'll tend to hit washes more just for traffic. So I, I get good pics when there's not a lot going on. During the rut for deer, you know, there's a lot going on, so I'll get some fantastic stuff yeah. that I want the rest of the year. Uh, the, the bear rut's coming up, so I'm, fingers crossed I get some good stuff for bears. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, I, I run them all year, but there, there is kind of seasons per animal. Um, like, the middle of the summer, a lot of animals are having babies, and it's cool getting, you know, baby coat Mondays, uh, you know, fawns, things like that, mid-summer to end of the summer. Uh, those are what I target then. So, you know, I, it's like hunting, but I, I'm doing it with a camera, <laughs> seasonal, to get certain things on camera that 
you know, only happen once a year. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, what size SD cards do you recommend for the average person to use? So for me, I usually go to Best Buy and I snag their 32 megabyte. It's like an ultra sand disc card. It's like nine bucks. Um, but what specifically do you recommend or find works best? And how often do you change your cards out? Um, I do the same thing, sand disc. Uh, but I'll, I'll go down to, you know, the lowest megapixel possible. That's between 32 and anything else. Okay. You know, I, I started off 32. I thought, I've got to have 32. But I've realized throughout, you know, the years, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, I check my cameras often. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the camera sit for a long period of time doesn't make a big difference on how many pictures I get. But then again, I can go a week and, you know, have 80 videos or, you know, 2,000 pics. You know, six weeks, and I, you know, I might have ten videos. It just depends on where you put it and how much it uses. But um, you don't have to have top of the line, from what I've seen. Okay. You know, anything will work. Um, changing them. The only time I change them is sometimes uh, the camera just won't accept it anymore. You know, I'll, I'll I'll download my pictures from the camera onto my tablet when I'm checking them, and uh, I'll put it back in, and I'll say no card, no card, and. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll take it home, reformat it. But right then and there, I'll put in a new SD card and yeah. it accepts it. But other than that, cards last pretty much forever. Three, three years now. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they do last a while. I know as a photographer, a working photographer and stuff, I try and cycle mine out after a couple of years because they do corrupt eventually. But uh, I still have some of my original ones, even though still they don't always corrupt. I still have some that are like six, seven years old and still work just fine. So um, what about batteries? What do you tend to use? Are you using Energizer, the Ultimate Lithiums, or do you use something different? Um, I... Whatever I get a deal on, I'll be honest sure. with you. Sure. Um, Duracell. I really like Duracell. Okay. So, uh, you know, for for batteries, I usually look for Duracell, and I'll find deals. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know, a lot of people mention deals on Amazon and, um, you know, Costco, the Price Club, uh, the more generic versions. And I got some buddies that swear by those that last forever. But I, I've always liked Duracell, and they've, they've done well for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing I found too, is just kind of whatever presents itself and is available. You know, I found four in the drawer the other day and I threw them in and they work just fine. So, <laughs> um, right, right. yeah. What additional pieces of equipment do you use uh, for each camera that you place? You know, example being like cam lock boxes or bolts, straps, solar panels, external batteries, BOA locks, things like that. Um. I use whatever comes with a camera. Uh, the only thing additional I add sometimes is paracord. Okay. Um, depending on where I tie it up, sometimes the strap and it doesn't sit right or the branch or the tree isn't right and I, I can't strap it up properly with the strap that you know comes with it. Um, Wild Game has a little bungee cords with the hooks. Those are pretty cool because they can stretch. But uh, paracord's about the only thing additional that I, I have in my, my uh, backpack when I set my camps. Yeah. That's it. Absolutely. Uh, how many years of use are you seeing out of a camera before it goes bad? Um, all the cameras I had three years ago, I still have. There was okay. only one camera that I had an issue with, and it was one of my best uh, <laughs> at that time, a Bushnell. I was changing the batteries one day, and... The camera started smoking. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, it never worked since. And I was really bummed because the spot I had it at, I got some fantastic pictures. And uh, and like I said, I, I got the camera on sale. It was a killer deal. But uh, despite that, I turned around and bought another Bushnell. Yeah. And, you know, I'm happy with them. I like Bushnell. So, but other than that, one camera that I could say, you know, just quit working on me. That's huh. it. Huh, that's crazy. I've never heard of a camera start smoking before or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I just I just put the batteries in, too, and I I don't know what happened. And, you know, I put them in correct. I still, to this day, I don't know what happened. Huh, that's insane. Um, assuming that it's not s stolen, we talked about how many years of use that you're getting out of it. So how many cameras have you had stolen over the years? <laughs> yeah. One. One. One camera, and it was actually my fault. Uh, I set it up on the saddle above water, and it was just before the rifle deer hunt, and I had gotten 
some, uh, well, I checked it a couple of weeks where guys were by with Ramos on the deer hunt. Deep into it. <laughs> and I thought, oh, maybe I should move. But it was a killer spot because the bucks turned around during the, the fall work. Crest in that saddle, and I knew I was going to get some killer picks. And I chanced it, and the next time I went back to check it, it was gone. I was devastated. Uh. And you know, you know, it's not so much the camera, because I don't spend a lot of my cameras. It was what was on the SD card that really killed me. What I missed, what I didn't know, you know. That's what really bothered me. Um, so I've only had one stolen. Okay, okay. So I, I hide them real good now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you recently just had, I saw a post that you had just done recently, and you said somebody stole just the SD card out of the camera. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was actually a new place I went to, um, a new mountain range down south, and I had my camera for about a total of two months. Um, but after six weeks, uh, well, I checked it once in two months, and then six weeks, and then me and my buddy went out there to check them, and uh, it took Never, never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I can't believe they would take just the card and leave the camera too. Usually, it's both. Well, the thing was, um, you know, if they took the camera, fair enough, but they didn't. They only took the SD card, which is kind of I don't understand that because they're going to know that I know that you know someone took the SD card, but um, not knowing what was on my SD card for those six weeks is what drove me crazy. Sure, yeah. You know, and there might, have been, there might have been nothing on there. But, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what kills me the most is knowing what they got and what I didn't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what makes you decide when you hit a spot whether you're going to do photos or video? Um, well, I've always done photos. Okay. And I recently downed that, an app on my tablet for videos. And I'll be honest with you, ever since I went to videos, it's hard even putting any of my cams on photo anymore. Um, I just love the video. They show you much, you know, so much more. Um, they show you, you know, what the animals do and how it behaves. It, it's amazing. Uh, it, just to give you a, an idea, this one spot for the last two years, on this one trail, these bears have been going by. And I get, you know, the same pick of different bears going by this one tree. Well, when I put it on video, and I never knew this, they're actually stomping and rubbing against this tree and then urinating. But my, my still picks never showed me that. <laughs> they just showed me, you know, them walking in front of the camera and I get a great pick. But the video showed me other things they were doing that I never knew for the last two years. Huh. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I did switch it over to that mode and you find out there's a whole other slew of things that they're doing around there. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the thing. It's, it's like, you know, I was, I was just amazed by it because I, I had no idea. And another thing is, there's some little pine trees there and these bears mow over them. They, you know, walk over them and they, 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 they mow these trees down and they pop up behind them. Once again, it was a still picks. I never saw that, but with the video, I saw that. And then I found out later that's like a marking thing, you know, they're putting their scent on that little tree as they're walking over it, you know, and the, the videos are great. Uh, like I said, they show you a little bit more, I think, uh, in a sense of learning, but if you want great picks, then you gotta stay with picks. And I kind of miss that a little bit because I've been all about video, but I have some cameras that only do picks, so I kind of get the buzz. Best of both worlds. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about um, some camera placement, basically do's, do's and don'ts, and what are some basic uh, couple rules that you follow when doing that? First thing that I learned uh, was don't aim your camera to the south. <laughs> um, you tend to get more sun. Um, so if you get video or pics, you know, middle of the day, they're literally blinded. Um, I usually aim them to the north, a little bit east or a little bit west, but always somewhat to the north if I can. Unless it's a real wooded tree area, then it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, that, that's one of the big things uh, with trail cameras for me, especially out here in the desert. You know, it's the Arizona sun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when choosing a spot to set a camera, 
how do you narrow down your options and then finally land on a specific spot? I, a lot of times, for instance, I'll find, I'll narrow it down to like two or three and it's literally like I just toss a coin, but if you come to, come to a conundrum like that, how are you kind of breaking the tie and choosing where exactly you want to drop that camera? 99% of my cameras are on trails. So when I see trails with either scat or a lot of tracks, I know that's where to be. Um, what I'll do is I'll set up a cam, aim in one direction, looking down the trail. That's, that's another thing. A lot of people aim it on a trail, looking across the trail, so you'll get like a head or a butt, um, depending on the, you know, the, the camera tr trigger speed. Um, if you aim it down the trail, you'll either get it walking away or walking to the camera. So that's you know one of the little tricks of the trade. Um, and depending on what I get, uh, when I go back to check, it depends on um, you know replacing it a different direction, different angle on the other side of the trail. You know, sort of like that. It's, it's all trial and error. Mm -hmm. well, I've noticed that some of your placements are getting really specific just as far as like javelina bedding, um, passers by under trees and stuff like that. With those kind of placements, how are you avoiding constantly triggering your cameras with little non-related movements, whether it's like grass, sticks blowing the wind, um, or are they getting triggered and we're just seeing only the captured footage that you're looking for? You know... It depends on location. Uh, some places, uh, my cameras don't pick up hardly anything, and other places they pick up every little thing, even a butterfly, a bird, the, the wind. Um, the tree that it's on, you know, if it's real windy, the tree will sway a little bit and just trigger that camera like crazy. Um, leaves blowing on the ground. I, I trim all the grass about eight, nine foot away from uh, the camera. Any overhanging uh, limbs and in the background I trim a lot too um, with like you know with setting them up I used to go about three four foot up a tree or on a rock or what have you to aim straight out maybe a tad down I've since switched and I go lower and aim the camera more up hmm. that kind of eliminates a lot more of the, the ground cover stuff getting triggered um, because if your camera's up and aiming down it's going to get everything in front of it plus down on the ground but if your camera's straight out and aim it up a tad um you tend to you know miss out on a lot of stuff on the ground that the camera usually picks up and another thing is i move them around a little bit uh for better angles um and i've learned that with the videos um a lot of people always start too high and i even did you know setting it up on a tree or a branch um i try to get kind of eye level with the animal is what i look for Okay. Perfect. That's a great tip. Um, if you get another hunter or just a person in general on your cam, does that automatically disqualify that spot for you? <laughs> yes and no. It depends on what, what I'm wanting to get a pick of there. Okay. Or, um, you know, like if it's hunting season, I'll probably yank it because there's going to be more traffic. If it's you know, throughout the year when, when it's not hunting season, uh, I'll probably leave it. Um, and if they've gone by the camera, they've seen it. And if they were going to take it, I think they would have taken it then and there. Um, you know, I've, I've had quite a few hunters and just hikers walk by and they'll wave. They'll lean over and wave at the camera. And I'm thinking, you know, people like that are not going to take it because uh, they would have then. Um, but, yeah, it does kind of put up a red flag for me. Absolutely. So... Um, usually in spots like that, it depends on what camera I got there. If I have a, you know, old beat up camera that just does pics and, you know, it, it didn't cost a lot, I'll chance it if I'm getting some great pics there. Yeah. Uh, but I won't leave a, a, a more expensive camera there because if it does get taken, it's more of a loss for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've had some of the same things where I've had people, you know, a guy wave and, and notice the camera. And fortunately, that was the case. And, you know, nobody harmed it or anything. But um, I haven't yet fallen to any, um, you know, stealing or vandalism or anything like that, fortunately. So I'm just kind of curious to see what your thoughts were on if somebody walks across it and what to do from there. Um, right. And, you know, in regards to like lockbox and things like that, you know, I got some friends that use them and a lot of people swear by them. But a lot of the places I place my cameras are remote and 
places I never see anybody, and I hide them real well. I just can't see taking in all that gear, extra gear, to secure my camera. You know, I I feel silly about it. You know, I, you know, I want to be able to go out there, set up my camera, and never have an issue. And you know, everybody feels that way, but. I, I don't put my cameras in places where there's a lot of people or a lot of hunters or traffic. Um, you know, if I did, then I probably would use block boxes if that was all I had. Um, but I just, you know, it's kind of fun hiding them anyway. Because if, if I hide them and people can't see them, I even have a hard time finding them sometimes, to be honest with you. But um, if I can't find them. Then you know the animals probably don't see them as much, and I get great pics. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> um, we actually have a listener question that popped up. Um, it's which is the next question that I'm asking. But what techniques or methods do you take to slip in and out to spots without detection? Are you using like an anti scent spray or anything like that? You know, believe it or not, I'm a smoker. I smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So you know. And you've seen the stuff I get on camera. Oh, yeah. Um, so, being a smoker, that tells you right there, you know, I, that's probably the worst smell to have whatsoever <laughs> out of any type of scent on you. Um, and I've only had one camera attacked by a bear in the last three years. Wow. Other than that, um, the animals sometimes look at the camera, and I'll get video of them coming up to the camera. I think they hear the triggering of a certain cameras. You know, they'll hear the little click or the noise, uh -huh. and that's what gets their curiosity. But other than that, I've never had anything mess with my cameras, you know, because of scent. Um, you know, so I, I've never had an issue. I'm not saying anybody else, you know, won't, but uh, considering I'm a smoker, you, you think, how would I get the pictures I do? But yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. Hey, you, um, you it, never it, know. It could be something that they're just never used, used to any smelling. spray, nothing. You know, mm -hmm. I don't even use that stuff really when I hunt. To be honest with you, I yeah. use the wind when I hunt, but with cameras, you don't know what direction they're going to come in. But it doesn't seem to bother the animals. At least it hasn't yet. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and you kind of foreshadowed one of my questions there. Uh, I asked, wanted to ask if you had ever had a, a camera destroyed by a bear. Can you kind of talk about that story real quick? Uh, yeah, it was actually in this spot. I went up, um, I found some big tracks, uh, in the leaves. Um, <laughs> I called it Bigfoot and, uh, I knew it was a bear and I couldn't wait to get a picture of it. And I ended up getting like five or six pictures of him. And then I moved it to a different, uh, on the same trail, I moved it to a different tree about 10 feet away to get a different angle. And it, I think it was a different bear came down and I got a bunch of pics of him right at my camera and stuck his tooth right through the lens. And I actually replaced the lens and the camera still works to this day. But I've got a buddy that, you know, just recently had like four cameras chewed to pieces by bears. But wow. I've been lucky. Maybe maybe it's a cigarette smoke. <laughs> you know, they, they don't like it, so they leave my cameras alone. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I've, I've had one... Um sniff my camera and I've got a great picture of just the the end of his nose and the two giant eyes is what fills the entire you know field of view but fortunately he didn't bite it or do anything like that to it um all oh, right right <laughs> right what's the coolest video or photo to date that you've captured on camera um it's it's with a, a gosira trail camera a japanese or a chinese camera that i was sent to me um from the company and it was a video of a buck down by this creek in the winter time and he went and got a drink and he actually came up to the camera sniffed the camera i got some still pics and this camera takes like a couple pics and then starts a video yep. right out immediately after um so he came up, I got a couple of pics of him, you know, a selfies, I guess you could say. He turned around, went down to the creek, but the lighting, it being wintertime and kind of overcast and the water flowing down the creek was unbelievable. Um, that was probably to date my, my, my best video. Uh, my best pick was a uh, cinnamon bear coming down the trail. Uh, I mean, jet red. And uh, he was just far enough away from the camera, but not too far, to give me a perfect picture with, you know, all the trees around him and the greenery. It was, you know, it was killer. Yeah. Um, but my very first awesome pick was a mountain lion coming out of the shadows, trotting up right up in line on the trail. 
to my camera. That was probably my best. Yeah, I've yet to get a mountain lion. That's something I'm looking forward to. I got a couple bears, but uh, waiting for that. Well, you know, and I, I, I got to tell you, the whole reason I got into trail cameras huh? um, was only for one thing, to get my first Arizona Jaguar. That's what led me to where I'm at now. Yeah. And I have yet to get a Jaguar, and I get everything but a Jaguar. <laughs> but everything I get... It's absolutely awesome with all the other animals. But yeah. that was the whole reason I got into trail cameras to begin with, just to get either a, a Jaguar or an Oslet in Arizona. Yeah, that's crazy. I was actually going to ask you about the Jaguar. Um, how do you feel? I'm, you obviously, you want the picture, but is there a little bit of uh, desire to c keep continue the hunt? Or uh, how, how do you think you'll feel once that, that Jaguar picture is in the bag? I'll probably want another one just as bad. <laughs> I'll be waiting for the second one. Yeah. You know, when I started doing trail cameras and I started getting animals, I'd get legs or a butt or a head or something, and I was like, oh my God, these are awesome pictures. <laughs> and then I'd think to myself, well, I want the whole animal. Then I'd think to myself, well, I want the whole animal facing the camera. There's, it never ends. You yeah. always want better than what you've got, even if you get something fantastic. Yeah. You always have another goal, you know, uh, something to strive for. Um, so yeah, if I ever got a Jaguar, I'd want another one. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, you know, like I said, that was, that was the whole reason I got into it. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm glad I didn't give up because <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have gotten everything else. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I, I'm just telling you just, I feel more experienced just watching the stuff that you post. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, I think luck has a lot to do with it. Um, I, you know, and well, you need to buy a lottery ticket if that's the, the case. <laughs> yeah, well, growing up in the eighties, you know, hunting was a different way. We hiked and hiked and hiked. Nowadays, everybody glasses, so the style of hunting has really changed with a lot of hunters. Yes, sir. But I grew up hiking and exploring and going over that next hill and going into that canyon. A lot of people don't do that. They they glass from afar and wait on the animals. Well, because I grew up, you know, doing it on foot. I um I learned a lot that you don't you won't learn when you do, when there's all you do is glass yeah. um and the trails and tracking and reading signs on the ground you know that's what led me to a lot of my great pics and uh, videos with the trail cameras because I, that was instilled in me as a, a youngster and I still do it to this day mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. yep. What is one of the strangest things that you've ever had on camera? Something that maybe you just couldn't explain, you know, uh, or just like, what in the world is that? <laughs> um, in the middle of nowhere, this actually happened uh, last fall. Um, absolute middle of nowhere. Um, I got a domestic cat in front of my camera. And uh, there's no way a cat you know, a house cat would be out there. And I, for the, it was kind of blurred a bit. It was at nighttime and the flash went off and he was a little bit close, but uh, I actually got him again later. So I knew it was for sure it was a cat, but I was thinking Jacarande, you know, some kind of new species. And I was pretty stoked about it. And then it turned out I got him again a few days later and it ended up being a domestic cat. And I don't know how he got out there or how he survived with all the, you know, wild animals out there. But yeah, it was a domestic cat, so that would be the craziest thing. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this next one, disclaimer, I believe I'm correct on this. I, I checked my regs today. Cell, cell cams are now illegal per the new regulations that are released. Um, however, I still want to talk about them as the regs can always change. I'm personally, I'm indifferent to them. I'm on the fence. I don't really care one way or the other. But just want to throw that right. here. Just want to throw it your way. What are your feelings on the whole idea of cell cams? Um, do you feel that they help disturb the game less since we're not out there checking it all the time? Or do you feel that it violates that fair chase code? No, see, I, the whole reason I do cell cams is to get me out there. I, I find a lot of things because when I go to check my cams, I'll find new trails, new places to set them. If I did it from a phone, you know, or a computer at home, and I never went out there, that would take the fun of out, out of it for me. Um, now, people that maybe, you know, have cameras on property real far away or, you know, cameras in another state that can't check them, but, you know, every six months or a year, then I can see the benefit of that. But for me, going to check them is what it's all about. That's what I love. Um, so, you know, I, I don't care much for cellular phones. I wouldn't get one. 
you know, for the, the camps. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. I, you know, I, I won't knock anybody for having them. But to me, the whole point of having trail cams is to go and check them. That, that's, that's the fun of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then also, how do you feel about like some of those proposed rules that kind of popped up where they didn't want any cameras within a quarter mile of a watering hole? What were your thoughts on that? Um, well, once again, like with me being a smoker and check my cameras, the animals aren't bothered. They, they know I was there. They know when I was there. They know everything about me because of my scent. Mm -hmm. Um, so being at water holes, honestly, I don't think it affects them. If it did, they would never show up, and then people wouldn't put their cameras there anymore. I mean, if it stopped animals from going to water, um, you know, yeah, I just, I don't agree with it. I, I don't think it makes a difference, uh, and I'm glad that they ruled otherwise. But, um, you know, I hardly ever put mine on water. Um, if I do, it's more of a spring or a creek. I don't do water tanks or holes where, you know, cattle go or you're going to find hunters. I do them more in remote places that usually me and just the animals know that the water pocket or pool is there. Yeah. 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 I, I sit with you too. I think it was absolutely ridiculous personally. Um, but I do, I have recently started doing wallows. That's been my new thing that I'm kind of venturing into right now is the wallows and seeing them bathe and all that stuff. I look forward to hitting the rut and, and kind of seeing them, you know, get a little uh, uh, aggressive with it and, and raking the mud and stuff. But that's been my thing lately is wallows. I haven't been doing water holes or anything like that. Yeah, I, you know, in fact, right now, because the rains, you know, are what, three or four weeks away, the monsoons, I've got some pools that I found. That I found them a couple of years ago that, you know, they kind of last till the monsoon starts. Now, right now, with it being so hot, those pools are like gold, especially for bears. They go swim in them, the animals go drink from them, everything shows up there. They're, you know, they're a gold mine. Um, and like you said, they're sort of like a wallow. Uh, I usually get more in places like that than I do big old tanks that have water year round, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I've got a couple listener questions here that we'll cover and then we'll kind of just wrap things up after that. And, uh, we'll just go from here. Uh, buggy Montana on Instagram. Uh, and some of this we've already covered too. Let me preface with that, but we'll just answer these questions again. Anyways, buggy Montana on Instagram said, it sounds like you're doing a lot of prep for your spots. I found that I'm spending a lot of time landscaping. Uh, I'm hauling in small pruning shears, folding bone saw, folding shovel, uh, putting down salt. If I'm setting up three cams, it might take all day to hike in with 50 pounds pack to start all the prep and set up. How many cams do you set? And what does your preparation look like? like as far as scouting spots and what's your gear list? Um, well, uh, the only thing I take with me is a pair of snips from uh, grass and uh, branches. Um, I, I try to trim uh, the least amount as possible, but enough to not really trigger my camera um, as much. Because uh, to me, if the animals know there's a lot of change because, you know, it's like there is like being in your house for them. They know if something's moved in the room, you know, um, I, they're going to know something's up, but I think the more you mess with, the more they're going to be skittish to come back and maybe a while before you get some good picks. So I do the least amount as possible, but enough just to, you know, secure my cameras. So I check them again. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, Buggy Montana also had a follow follow up. They wanted to know what settings do you prefer for your cameras? I normally use three photo burst, thirty second delay, eight me eight megapixels with mixed results. Also, once again, it depends on what you want pictures of. Like if you just heard a javelina, the three bursts would be great because they're going to hang around, hang around. Mm -hmm. uh, one burst, I prefer. I used to use three. Now I'm down to one because. Um, it, it, it takes less away from the camera. Um, sometimes that one burst gives you what you want. You get three and you get three of ones you didn't want. You know, it's hit and miss. It also depends on the camera. Um, some cameras are triggered faster, so the three bursts give you something good. Other cameras, you know, the one burst, it, it's, like I said, it's all trial and error. Uh, 
I, I try a little bit of everything. I'll try it one way for a while and then switch it over. It's, you know, I, I'm learning every day I'm out there. I'm, I'm trying something new. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's funny? Is, is this sounds goofy, but I actually have taken all of my trail cams, put them out back on one of my tree trunks, and I walk back and forth in both day and night. So I'll do it at like 12 or 1, and I'll walk around. I've got these two big oleanders, and I'll walk in between them so I can trigger it like a wildlife animal would or whatever. And then I'll do the same thing at night, right. too, because I want to test those different, and I'll walk at different distances. I'll walk really close, and I'll walk farther back. That way I know how that camera is going to act. And my neighbors probably wonder exactly. what that, my neighbors probably wonder what the heck I'm doing walking around like crazy, but you know, at least when I go out in the field, I know exactly how that camera is going to act. I know exactly what it's going to do and perform. And so that way that can help me choose what camera I put where and, and what the setup is going to look like if I need to alter anything out there. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, it kind of depends on the camera because every camera is different. Mm -hmm. Even though, you know, you might have three cameras that say they do the same thing. They won't. Yeah. And they don't. Um, it's it's just it's trial and error. Uh, you just got to try different things and see what works best for you, and do it before the hunting season. Um, and I, another thing I wanted to tell you is because I have cameras out year round, uh -huh. I have so many different places. I I hardly ever hunt where my I set my cameras. Um, you know, I've got a bunch of deer, bear, javelina, you know, where whatever I'm hunting spots and. My cameras are usually in other spots because I my cameras are out there for the picks more than to educate me on what's what's in that area. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's so it's it. I I think some people think, wow, you must get stuff every year, and I don't. Um, you know, in regards to film tags, um, I I get a high off the off the picks. You know, in the videos, so that that's so awesome. Like I said, it's like hunting to me year round. Um, so it, my cameras are out there. Like I said, I initially started for jaguars, so. They're not all of my hunting spots. I'll put a couple here and there in some spots, but 90% of my cameras are in spots I don't even hunt. Yep. 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 I see. I like hearing other people's strategies because my, my typical strategy that I seem to do right now, um, is I'll put it there out of camera on a spot that I've prepped and gotten ready and I'll kind of watch what's going on. And then I'll pull it like a week or two before a hunt and just kind of let things settle was my mentality on it. And then after that, I'll go into that spot and kind of get in there and I know what's there and stuff. But I like hearing other people's strategies too, because then that kind of helps me. Maybe I want to take something from there and add it to mine and incorporate it. So yeah, yeah, you know, and so sometimes when I get stuff on cameras, you know, come the hunting season, those animals aren't around there anymore. So True. it depends on what time of year you get the picks, too. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, well, I've got a, like, for instance, I've got a deer spot where there's just, there's huge bucks, and I know that the genetics in there are great. And during the summer, I don't get a picture of any of those deer. None of them are there. But then come August, oh. all of a sudden they're there again. And, it, you know, they're there through the end of January, and then they disappear. So... Um. Right, right, yeah, yep. Um, Colton Crane had a couple different questions here. Most of them have already been answered, but uh, he wanted to know what's the best value for a trail camera. Uh, if you just you know, pick one out of the I, sky, one of my my best trail cam, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, for the price and what I get out of it for pictures and videos, wild game trail cameras. The Terra 12 is my favorite right now. The Terra 12. Okay, yeah, he said he wants to, I'd like to get more than five if I could, because where I hunt is a huge area and it's very open. You know, and here's the thing. I would rather get five cheaper cameras and, and spread them out for the picks than get one real expensive one and rely on just something walking by that one. Uh, you know, I, I didn't think that way when I started. But now, the, the like I said, the cheaper cameras, are, oh man, they, they're so good. Even the cheap ones, you know, the, the quality's really good. It's decent. And for what you pay, you cannot beat it, you know? So in, in other words, I'm not going to go broke doing this. Um, so people can. You can go crazy with it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I would, what I do is I've got a couple lower end cameras and then I've got just one right now. I'll probably get a second one that's really high end. If I see something that I really, really like in a spot that I pick up with the lower end cameras, then I'll put one of my high end cameras in there and just get just for, uh, I guess, vanity, really just for high quality content or something like that. Yes. But then I'll kind of move it around exactly. and adjust accordingly. So, right. Um, David, I 
apologize if I butcher this last name, but David Geringer, uh, wireless cameras, do they have to have cell coverage? I hunt areas that have no cell phone reception at all. Do the cameras still work or only in an area that has network signal? And I think we kind of covered that because while well, they're illegal, we can't use them. So um, I believe though- yeah, that I, 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 I wouldn't know because I don't use them. <laughs> uh, yeah, me either. But I believe though what you do basically is it should work pretty much anywhere. They've got massive antennas on the top and it's just like three or five right. bucks a month. I think you can pay by a month to month basis. You don't have to have a contract or anything like that. Maybe David's out of state though too. So, um, but if you're in another state, you can use them. They do look interesting. I'm sure they'd be super cool. Um, but yeah, so I just, just a month to month basis, five bucks a month is what I've seen the general price go for. And then, um, uh, I haven't heard anybody say that they won't cover anywhere yet. So I'm not sure I don't use it. Right. Right. But well, Jason, any closing thoughts that you have for those out there that are, whether they're beginning their hunting journey or the trail cam journey, uh, kind of give us a, a sum up of what you, you think people should do. Um, you know, cameras will get you out in the field more and I think you'll learn a lot more. Um, you know, instead of just three or four times a year during the hunting seasons, uh, you know, you'll learn so much that, you know, will benefit you in the hunt. Uh, like it has done with me. Um, I've learned so much from trail cams, not in the sense of throwing tags with them, uh, but learning about animals uh, in general. Um, you know, it, it's it's nice. It's nice being out there. And in a sense, instead of hunting a few times a year, I hunt pretty much all year because of my cameras. And uh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, that's, that's probably about it, and I love it. And there's nothing like going and checking trail cameras. It's like Christmas every single time. It really is. Yeah, I can't agree more on that. Where can people follow you on social uh, if they want to see some of your awesome, awesome footage, Instagram, Facebook, some of the Facebook groups that you're in? Uh, trail cam therapy on Facebook, uh, trail cam pics I post on, uh, um, all the hunting sites. I'm on pretty much all at the hunting groups, you know, um, uh, Instagram, you know, I'm on there. Uh, that's, that's about it. Perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll repost a lot of your stuff, especially that one with the buck, uh, down by the Creek that you said turned out just awesome. I'll repost that. And if anybody wants to follow you, they can, uh, just click on the picture and you'll be tagged in that. So. Awesome. Yeah, and see the cool thing about that because I had that on video. If that was on that camera was on camera, well, let me refresh that. That camera was actually on pics, and I'd get a buck walking by. You know, uh, they're coming towards the camera, or walking away from it on the trail. When I put that on video, that's when I realized that scrape was there because I got on video of them stop, yeah. and you know they urinate on the scrape and then rake the bush. Now, see, video showed me all that. The the pic camera didn't. So that kind of shows you, you know, the difference between pics and, and, and video. Yeah. Well, now you've got me convinced I'm switching all my cameras to video as soon as I go back out there. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, hey, Jason, I really appreciate you doing this, uh, especially on a whim. I only contacted you a couple days ago. And uh, thank you so much for coming on here with us and talking and just dropping all your knowledge and everything. And uh, I'd like to follow up with you in a few months and we'll get you back on again as we get closer to season. Um, and uh, I'd like to especially follow up with you, too, about bear and see how that goes for you. Absolutely. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you, uh, you know, to Bo Hunt and AZ, and I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I will absolutely share anything I get, and you'll see what I get in the next few months. It should be interesting with the, with the, the bear, you know, the bears this summer and with the, the fall hunt coming up. So uh, hopefully I'll have some great stuff, and hopefully, fingers crossed, one day I'll get my first jaguar down here in southern Arizona. I think you will. I have confidence in you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, hey, thanks again. It was good chatting with you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank All you right. very much. We'll talk later. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode with Jason Miller. I hope we can all walk away with a deeper knowledge on trail cameras, their placement, and how to capture better quality behavior of our wildlife. Make sure to follow Jason on Instagram. His handle is Miller. 0007. You can see some of his videos and photos posted over on my feed on both Facebook and Instagram at bowhuntingaz, and he'll be tagged in anything that I post of his. Thank you so much for your time today. Please share the episode with a friend, 
Grab your nearest Apple device and smash those five stars for me and write a little review. It'll really help me out. Don't forget to be watching Boat Hunting AZ closely on social. I'm about to amp up on the giveaways. You won't want to miss this, guys. I'll see you all at the Elk Seminar on July 16th at the Calvary Church off of I-17. Have an awesome weekend, everyone. God bless. We'll see you in the next episode.